live in a culture where work is almost everything. It's the key thing people ask you about. It's the key place that people find and build relationships. It helps you to pay rent and buy food. Important. And sometimes it can seem like, seem like our work or our lack of it defines us. So as followers of Jesus, how do we find meaning in work without being defined by it? How about you join me as we pray? Lord God, we thank you for your word to us. We thank you that you give us work, that you love us. And Lord, we, we pray that as we, um, as we listen to you this morning, as we listen to the Holy Spirit in all parts of this service, Lord, that you would encourage us and challenge us, that you would draw us close to you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are just visiting with us or putting you to Northern, we are starting a new series today, a new kind of series, disconnected, a series of disconnected things about that. So for the next three weeks, we're going to be looking at questions that this congregation has asked. And this week, we are thinking about work. Um, and what does work mean for us? What does it mean to be an example or a witness? How is God working in us and through us? It's a small topic this morning. <clears throat> we'll see how we go. <laughs> On average, humans spend around 90,000 hours of their life working. It's a lot of time. So what, are we, um, what we do and who we work with and who we work for shapes us and forms us as people. What you do with your time, paid or unpaid, matters to God. So if we want to make our work meaningful and think about it from God's perspective, where do we start? I think we start with your work matters. It is important. But you are not your work. And your work is not all of who you are. Your identity is in Jesus. That's the first thing. In Ephesians, um, it's a letter that um, Paul wrote. It's intended for believers who didn't have a Jewish background. And um, in that letter, we find a lot of encouragement for the church to know its calling and to understand what it meant um, for their, them to live out their faith um, here on earth. If you haven't read it, we you haven't read it for a while, I encourage you to read it um, this week. It's not very long. It has a lot to say about how we live out our faith in the world. Um, it's pretty encouraging. But within this letter, there are a few verses that we're going to look at briefly this morning. And Mary read them for us um, from Ephesians chapter 2. Thank you, Mary. Um, it goes like this. Um, I'll read it to you again. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift of God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things that we've done. None of us can boast about it. We are God's masterpiece. He had he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. These verses um, follow a section of the letter that starts at the beginning of chapter 2 and it captures kind of an image of salvation, of what that saving work of Jesus is and what it means for believers. And then accepting that salvation makes us a new creation in Christ. That's what this little verse, section of verses is about. And it gives us a picture of what it looks like to live as that new creation. You are a new creation because of Jesus, not because of any kind of work that you do. Your identity is in Christ. If we know and we love the Lord Jesus and we have made him first in our lives, we are a new creation. It's amazing, isn't it? You are a new creation. Maybe you need to hear that this morning. God has made you new. You have a clean slate, a fresh start, and your identity is now in Christ. And you are God's masterpiece. This gets better and better, doesn't it? I love that language. It makes me think of an artist taking years to perfect the light and the contours of a painting. You are not your work. You are not your role in your family. You are not whatever keeps you up at night. 
you are God's work. He was and is and he will continue to do this work in each of us. We have a God who works. <clears throat> this is kind of, I guess, the, the next step in, in working this through. When we read the creation narratives that we find in Genesis, um, it's especially there that we see God at work, creating. But when we start to look at it, God is continuously at work. Throughout scripture we see that. He's always working. And if we look at the world, we look at our lives, we see God at work. We have a God who works. And he created people to work too. The first job that God gave man in the garden was to name all the animals. It's a great job, right? I think this one should be a giraffe. Like, it's a cool job. I like it. And then the man and the woman were to care for creation, to be fruitful and to fill the earth. But this work doesn't lead to life with God. This work doesn't lead to salvation. Our work doesn't lead to salvation. Our new life with God is not a reward for our work. Now maybe you're thinking, yeah, yeah, I know, I've heard that before. We don't earn our salvation, I got it. But have we heard it? Have we really? There is nothing, nothing you can do to make, you, to make God love you more than he does. Nothing. And that means that we don't earn anything with God through our work. But it is a chance to respond to God's grace. So if you're taking notes, this is my kind of worth taking a note maybe. Work is about responding to God, not about earning anything. So it's really countercultural. Our community will tell you that work is about earning, earning and stepping and stepping and stepping over people if you have to. For us, um, for work to be meaningful for us as followers of Jesus, it needs to be work that's carried out in response to God. Yeah, great, Sam. Good work. What, what does that mean? <laughs> I was sharing this um, message with Greg earlier in the week and uh, he said to me, you say work a lot in this um, message. Maybe you could work to work it in a bit more. <clears throat> okay, no laughter. That's okay. Never mind. We'll try later. I'll work on that one. Um, this is really important. Um, this is a really important framework for work, that work is a response to God. It shifts our expectations of work and it changes our attitude. Now, I think when this question was raised, um, it was focused on paid employment. How do we make that meaningful? But when we think about work and when you think about work this morning, I want you to think about a broader concept than paid employment. Think about paid and unpaid tasks or roles that you have, chores, learning, travel, volunteering, caring, sport, exercise, gardening, as well as whatever helps you pay the rent and buy food. All these things are an opportunity to respond to God's grace. What would it look like to do the washing up as a response to God's grace? Or go to the gym and work out as a response to God's grace? Whatever you're doing, whatever is in front of you, do it with joy, with dignity, do it well. Not because it earns you favour with God, but because God has set you free to do this work with wholeness. Your identity is in Christ. Yeah? So this work, whatever work is in front of you, doesn't need to complete you or fill you. You come to it already full, ready to do whatever it is. This changes how we approach work, doesn't it? 
the passage um, in Ephesians says that God planned good things for us to do. These good things are the, the work, the tasks and the projects, the roles and relationships that God would have us undertake and develop. What has God planned for you? What has God called you to? It's a question that lots of people ask, lots of young people. Um, when I was a youth pastor, this was like the number one question that young people in the church would ask. What has God called me to? A bunch of 12-year-olds running around trying to figure it out. I'm like, I don't know. 25, I don't know. I was at the time. It's good old days. <clears throat> when we talk about call, we can sometimes get caught up on having the perfect job or the perfect career, or doing just the right kind of volunteering that uses all our gifts and skills. And I'm not saying that that's not worth exploring. It absolutely is. God may have very specific things for you to do in your life, but while you figure that out, God also has some good things that we could be doing anyway. We all have a general call, and any calling that you have will be a more specific version of this. We find it in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. It goes like this. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. In verse um, 19, we often see that word go and we think it means kind of like travelling or intentionally directing our path toward making disciples. The sense of it is more a bit like as you go. If you change the word, as you go. So as you go about every part of your life, make disciples. You know, that, makes it, that makes it more challenging, doesn't it? Just as you go, make disciples on your way. But this is the work that has eternal significance. To make disciples, Jesus says, how we do that is that we teach them to obey his commands. We teach them to live the way that Jesus taught. We teach them to live life well. And to do that, to start with, we model it. And we start doing our life with people. We let them see the whole of our lives. We let them in. We not only show them, but we explain why we do things a certain way. This is our work. And our work is meaningful because it's a response to God. We all have different tasks and roles and these change over the course of our lifetime. At any one time, you might have paid work, volunteer work, you might be a parent, a child, a carer, a student. And any of those roles come with tasks and projects and relationships. God is asking you to be a disciple of his in all of those situations and to make disciples in all of those situations. This is how we infuse any task, any work, with meaning and purpose. We make our work a response to God's grace if through our work we can be a person of faith who goes into our work with Jesus and for God. With Jesus and for God. Now, does that mean that you need to read the Bible aloud as you serve coffee? Please don't do that. That will probably get you fired. Um, what it does mean is that you'll have the opportunity in every part of your work to do that work differently to those around you. And then you will get the opportunity to share why you do it that way. I want to walk this through um, together, if that's okay. It is okay, because I am up here. <laughs> it is okay. Uh, so think generally about who you work with. Okay? Now, I want to be clear. If you are here and you are currently not employed or you are retired, you still work. Okay? You still do stuff. So think about who you are doing those things with. My first job was at a, a supermarket. I worked on the checkout and I had a group of people who I worked with um, all in the same shift and I had a supervisor. 
But actually, when I think about it, I worked on my own in that job. And there are lots of jobs that might seem like we're part of a team or it might seem like we have people we work with, but actually we do most of our work alone. The people I worked with, though, were the customers. It was a small local supermarket, big chain, but small local supermarket. I think Marion can relate to that. And we had regulars. And I talked to many of the same people every week. And I had an opportunity to be kind to them, to ask them how their day was and really mean it, and to listen to their answer. And for some people, I was the only person they spoke to that day. So think about who you work with, your co-workers, your boss, your children, grandchildren, customers, clients, carers, friends. How can you, as you go, model being a disciple of Jesus and also help them to learn the ways of Jesus? If we spend, on average, 90,000 hours at work over our lifetime, we have an amazing opportunity to influence people. Just as they can shape you and form you, you too contribute to them around you. And this church has witnessed that. Some years ago, some of our newer members might not know that CareWorks um, used to host a large number of people um, who were experiencing unemployment. And they would be engaged in volunteering here um, through various projects that were running. And the staff that worked at CareWorks shifted their perspective because of the leadership here. And the volunteers changed their perspective about work because of the way that the staff treated them here. The culture of CareWorks was to love people first, to give them a place to belong, to tell them that they mattered, they were important. And that culture came from this community, this church. And you can take that culture with you everywhere you go. And it changes people. There's a promise in that verse from Matthew 28, and it says, um, I will be with you, Jesus says, I will be with you. Jesus will be with us. When you think about who you work with, you are also working with Jesus. Did he come up on your list? You are God's workmanship. He is working on you and in you and through you and also working with you. Amazing. So God, isn't it? Our work is meaningful as we work with Jesus in that, whatever it is, whatever those tasks are. Now, there were two things that I kind of said earlier that help us make our um, work a response to God. And the first is thinking about who we work with, work with Jesus. The second thing is about what or who we work for. Who or what do you work for? So I want you to, um, yeah, for the money, maybe? It's it's important. It's not a, (laughs) it's important. Do you work to get you to the next holiday? To make your boss happy? To get the right promotion? To please your family? Or maybe it's the outcomes. You work to see people get well. You work so that people are cared for so that kids learn, so that the environment is sustained, so that people receive justice. We could have as many different answers to that question as we have people listening (laughs) here um, or at home, possibly more, because often we work for more than one thing. But I want you to think about your work right now, particularly if you um, are not in paid work I want you to take a second and really nail it in your mind. What is your work? You got it? Okay. Who or what are you working for? What do you want to achieve? Who is asking you to do the work that you're doing? 
In my first job, I was paid to scan and pack groceries. That's what I did for my boss. But in that job, for God, my job was to be kind to people who didn't receive that anywhere else. Now, I wish I could tell you that when someone noticed that kindness, I didn't shrug it off and say, oh, it's okay, you're welcome. That I took a moment to say, you know, I actually can't be kind all day all by myself. I don't have a kindness superpower. God helps me do that. I wish I could tell you that I said that. I didn't. I shrugged and said, it's okay, you're welcome. But that we all have so many opportunities to point to Jesus, just in little ways, by doing our jobs differently, by doing them with Jesus and for God. Last thing. So while our work is um, not something that earns us grace, it doesn't mean that God doesn't ask us to be productive. Um, In Genesis, God asks the man and the woman to be fruitful. In Matthew 28, Jesus asks the disciples to make disciples, to multiply. In the parable that our kids talk focused on today, Jesus demonstrated that God expects that we are productive with what he gives to us. In our work, we are offered the opportunity to do it with Jesus, also offered the opportunity to do it for God's glory and his kingdom. When we do this well, God will grow it. Part of finding meaning in our work is to see how God might be working through our tasks to grow his kingdom and restore the world. And that helps us see how our work has eternal significance. Now, this really depends on your work, but God's kingdom can be extended through lots of avenues. If you're really struggling to see how God could use your work to extend his work in the world, there are two options. Um, one is that you can, you can try and figure that out, and if you need some help with that, um, call, da- no, call David or I um, during the week. We're happy to kind of work with you and help, help you figure that out. Um, write it down on your response card or email us and we'll, we'll give you a call, we'll send you an email um, and we'll help you figure it out because there are lots of ways that God can work with you and um, you can help to, to figure out how your work could be for God in that space. Second option is you know, maybe it's time to think about some new work. If you really can't figure it out, if it's really killing you, then talk to God about that. Get some new work. Here are some questions to help you think about your work. How are you being fruitful? What kind of fruit is your work in the world producing? Is it the kind of fruit that God would want you to grow? And are you giving the glory of that growth to God? I want to give you kind of, kind of two scenarios at either end of this spectrum. So we've all had jobs that were about paying bills. The, the primary focus of that job um, maybe it's your current job, was to earn money. That, that's, it's a, just a job. That's kind of what we say. It's just a job. The work itself is not particularly riveting, but it pays your rent. And you know what? If you take Jesus with you into that work and as you go about it, you model discipleship and you make disciples, then you've given that just a job meaning, eternal significance. Now, maybe you have or you're looking for that job that would use all of your gifts and all of your talents to make the most amazing difference to the world. That's great. And get paid for it. How amazing. What a blessing. If you have that job, hang on to it. Um, we all at some point look for that. And it's, it's worth looking for. If you're going to spend 90,000 hours doing something, you want it to matter to the world and you want to feel good about it. And that, that's nothing wrong with that. As long as you remember that you are not your job and your work is bigger than what you are paid for. You might have the greatest fit for your skills and gifts in your job, but are you giving the glory to God as you work? Are you really working 
for God. And if we aren't, even the greatest fit will burn you out. We've covered a lot of ground this morning. (laughs) Um, And maybe we've raised more questions than we answered. Um, I'm not sure if that's the point of this series, but um, there you go. I wanted to give you some time to process this through with God because there's a lot of things that kind of this can bring up for people. And so I've got some questions um, up on the screen. But whatever has touched your heart this morning, you pray that through. You take that to God now. And we're going to play some music just to reflect. Then I'm going to come and um, lead us in prayer and we'll, we'll pray all together. Um, I'll just read the questions if it's hard for, for people to um, see at home. So your identity is in Christ. What does this mean for you in your work right now? Second, what, what, is, your, what is your work? And how can you this week, just this week, just think about how you do it this week, Include Jesus and do it with him. So what kind of fruit is your work in the world producing? Is it the kind of fruit that God would want you to grow? And are you giving glory, the glory of that growth to God? I wasn't I'm going to say this, but I... Um, just am I think sometimes when we have this conversation about a fruit and producing things it can feel like you have to um, change the world (laughs) that you're responsible for that Um, sometimes work can be really small but really significant if you are um, caring for someone who was unwell or or small children They are hard work. You've all cared for small children at some point. Um, You know what? Raising a human, caring for someone who is um, not going to be around for too much longer, that that is tough work. It's really small work, actually, when you think about it in the world. It's quite small work, but it's so important. So important. Um, Sorry. (laughs) yeah, I'm going to leave you um, just to reflect for a minute and then I'll, um, I'll come back and pray for us. Lord God, thank you that you are a God who works. Thank you that you're a God who works in us. Lord God, we pray that um, you would shape and form and shift our attitude to work. That we might be able to um, more regularly and, and in better ways take you with us. That we would do our work with you and that that would give us joy. Lord, we pray that you might um, open up to us ways that we can give you the glory, that we can explain why we do work differently, why our attitude to work is different. And in those moments, God, we ask that you would give us courage to speak and the words to say. Lord God, as we... um, think about you and think about our work and think about what we are doing this week, Lord, we ask that you um, infuse it with joy. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.